This came home to me many, many years ago. His name was Jose, and he was only three years old. Three. He and his family were living in Houston. They had come to the United States illegally to make a better home and life for themselves. And Jose, as they were walking across a parking lot one afternoon, they, they were terribly poor. No one saw the car coming, and it hit him, and it, it pinned his neck between the bumpers of two cars. And he immediately lost consciousness, and they rushed him to the hospital. And when I got to the emergency room, as you can imagine, I was greeted by a family in shock and deep, deep pain. They spoke no English. I spoke no Spanish. And what I discovered very, very quickly is that we didn't need any words to cry together and sigh together and pray together. The nurse came and got us and said, if you want to see Jose come, you can come back and see him now. And we were shocked when we walked into the pediatric intensive care unit and little Jose opened up his eyes and he smiled and he wiggled his fingers. I'll never forget the look of the father and the mother as they exited the intensive care unit. He had on blue jeans and a tattered soiled t-shirt, a thin black mustache. He had his arm wrapped tightly around his wife and then, in words I do not understand, but certainly full of joy and celebration, he was like, yes! But it wasn't to last. I went back in to see Jose and saw the doctor and I said, this is good news, isn't it? And the doctor shook his head and said, no, no, I, I'm, I'm afraid not. That the injury had separated his vertebrae and only a thin fiber of a nerve was keeping him going. And that within a couple of days, he would die. I couldn't believe it. His eyes were open, his fingers were moving. They had such hope. For the next two or three days, the family and I gathered. And even though, again, we didn't share a common tongue, we shared heartache and pain and we lifted up our pain to God and our rage to God and our emptiness to God and in three days Jose died and they deeply and they desperately wanted to go back to Mexico and bury their son that's what they wanted to do but they were here illegally and they had no money and then I heard about something that was quite remarkable taking place in the hospital something that took me by surprise the doctors and the nurses, the nursing anesthetists, and the physician's assistants, and the secretaries all started giving money. And they collected an offering that made it possible for Jose and his family to fly back to Mexico for him to be buried with his family. I think, I think the staff in that hospital was born from above because they saw through the eyes of Jesus and when we dare to see through the eyes of Jesus we are moved by compassion to reach out and touch the brokenness of the world a brokenness that for the most part I would rather ignore and forget but which exists nevertheless When the Spirit opens up our eyes to see the world from the cross, strange things happen. People give up a week of vacation to go to Maine and help others. When the Spirit enables us to see from the cross, strange things happen. We visit people who are chronically ill or take them a casserole. When we are born from above, strange things happen. We end up caring about people and their pain and their suffering, no matter who they are or where they're from. And when that happens, my friends, I'm here to tell you from personal experience that a brick in the wall of racism and nationalism and classism and egoism can begin to crumble. When we are born from above, we're even moved sometimes to give so generously that we help others whose names and whose tongue we do not know. So the next time you see a street preacher, 
And he's carrying on to you about being born again and trying to beat people up. Get your magic marker and say, excuse me, and say again and write that. And when he asks you about it, I don't know what you'll say. But you might want to tell him about this story regarding Nicodemus and how Jesus invites us to touch the brokenness of the world because when we touch the brokenness of the world we are then touching the very heart of God.